Greetings, salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei. I'm back with another Power Query tutorial. Today's tutorial a little bit different than the other ones because it's not necessarily about what the end result is. It's more about the techniques and the fancy things we do to get to the end result will open your mind, blow your mind to the possibilities of inner and outer queries. So the problem we're going to be looking at today is like a reverse autofill. So let's say we have a data set like this, whoop, and we know we have bikes and we have the values and shoes and the values. What we want to do is, and this can easily be achieved with a pivot table, so it's not about the result, but sometimes you need to do this and the client wants to see it, but I would always do it in the pivot. You basically have blanks for all of these other values that we can assume all of these blanks are categorized on the bike and all of these blanks are categorized on the shoes. A reverse fall down. First things first, let's pull it into Power Query. Now it's in Power Query. First thing we're going to do, we are, I'm just going to take that change type out. We are going to create an index. So let's say create an index. We're going to start this index from one. So now we have an index column. No biggie. Next thing, we add a custom column. I'm going to call this custom column previous row product. Because in this column, I actually want the previous rows product. Okay. I'm just going to put the name of the previous step, which is added index in there. And I'm going to say, okay. So you'll see what we have now is we actually have a table. So each row now has the whole table as part of this column, as you can see over there. It's pretty cool. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a table called table.selectRows. Now the documentation for table rows. So we basically state the function and we need to give it a table as the first argument and then we need to give it a condition. First of all, you see this little each over here? This is sugar syntax. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this outer table. Yeah. Cool. And if I press enter, it's still going to give you the exact same result. You see the entire table is reflected for each row. All right. Next thing. Now I'm going to use the function table. Let's select rows. It needs one thing. It needs a table as an input and we are going to give it added index, which is the table. So I'm just going to now give it a condition. The condition would also basically be a each statement. But in this each statement, I'm just going to say the inner table. You see, the inner table refers to this table over here. The outer table refers to this table. And the inner table refers to each row within here. So this inner table. So inner table. Yes. Join the inner table. Yes. We're going to take the inner table index. Yes, we say index, which is the index within the inner table. And we're going to say where it is equal to the outer table. Yes. And the outer table index column over here. So we say index. But what we want to do is we want to do the previous rows. We don't want to wait as the same. We want to go one row back. So I'm just going to say there, minus one. And this should give me, let's see if all my syntax is correct. This should give me a very interesting thing. So this first one will, will give me nothing. But the second row will return, you can see the previous rows, the details. So this one will return uh, row number one. The third one will return row number two. And so, and just keep on going. So the seventh one will return row six. So what we have here is we actually now returned the previous rows detail. How cool is that? All right, but I'm going to take it a step further. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we want to return only the product. So I'm going to put there in brackets product. Okay, so now it's only returning the product, but as a list. Remember a list is a one column data set. I just want to return the very first row. So I'm going to put there in brackets curly brackets, zero, which will return the first one. So you'll see that we basically return the first one in each case. Okay, so now I can see it's giving us an error over there because that very first row doesn't really have a previous row to go to. There's no row zero. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to use try and otherwise. So there, in the commentary to this video, there is a link to the video I did on try and otherwise. Check it out. All right, so I'm going to say try. If the statement returns an error, right, then other wise no all right so see what happened there so now instead of that error we actually have a null excellent so you can see what we what we're going to try and do now we're just going to add another custom uh, conditional column that basically says if product equals my previous row product then make it null otherwise make it product so there we go there we go there we have our column i'm just going to drag it over there i'm just going to remove this one this one and this one call this product and there you have it there you have it. Brilliant and beautiful. So you can kind of see it's a kind of like a useless end result. I can't really see why you won't just do it in the pivot, but that ability to look at the previous row is pretty neat. It's pretty neat. Um, just another note, there's a more complicated solution to this using the accumulate list.accumulate function. Which is pretty cool, but I'm not going to do it in this specific video. I need to, I think I need to make a separate video on that. I'm just going to show you the actual results of that. So if I say, let's start a new blank query. It's going to paste it in there. You can see this is quite a complicated one. And with this, we get exactly the same results. But you'll see in here, we actually use the list accumulate function. And to use that is a little bit tricky, but uh, excellent, amazing function. I'm going to show you in a future video how to use list accumulate. But for now, let's just leave it there. It's your BA Sensei signing out.